Welcome to the Daily Update, where I'll go over the action in the market for Monday, September 25th, and then we'll see how things look for Tuesday, September 26th. We had a little bit of a bounce. Things are still quite negative. We're still in a weak seasonal time, but we're also coming into a seasonal time that might see a little bit of a bounce from here before we get more negative going into the latter part of the month. We did get to the point where we closed back above the August 2022 high. So that was positive. We've worked off some of this short-term oversold condition. Our list is a little bit shorter right now, but we're still quite negative when we look at the big picture. Let's go back and talk about what happened. Right at the open, we had a lower open. It looked like, okay, we're just going to continue on where we left off on Friday. We fell down to S1 immediately at 4,305. So we're still above that 4,300 level. This ended up being the low for the day. And then after that, we just chopped sideways. There wasn't a lot of buying that came in. The market's worried about interest rates, which continue to go up. And the dollar has still been doing quite well. That was putting pressure on stocks. But as the day went on, it's like the market wasn't as concerned about that. So prices then clawed their way back above the unchanged level, but could not get above the daily pivot at 43.31. We did get above that level, but it was going into the close. So we actually closed at the intraday high. Nothing all that wonderful or dramatic, but to see things close a little bit higher than where they opened is usually a positive thing that we can at least hang on to for right now. So we were up 0.4%, but volume still continues to be below average. You've got a lot of folks that are mainly long in the market and they don't like what they're seeing. Maybe they're aware that we're in some weak seasonal periods right now. There's a real negativity to the market. The Fed has been making lots of statements and people are like, okay, I don't know if I want to put $50,000 or $500,000 on the line right now. I want to wait until things get a little bit more clear I'm not just going to go in and buy the dip right now, which often works. At least I don't do this, but people tend to implement this when we're more in a solid uptrend and we're just not in a down or in an uptrend right now. The technicals, we're still negative overall. We're negative in the short and intermediate term. We're still positive in the long term. We're keeping an eye on that because we're still not too far above some pretty critical support levels that if we break through that, that could potentially turn even the longer term outlook to being more negative. And it's about inflation, interest rates, growth concerns, what the Fed may say, and then any other thing that could come flying in to have an impact on the markets. The comments that we can make are that we did get back above the August 2022 high. That was pretty negative to close there on Friday. Not only for the daily chart, that makes it look more negative, but also for the weekly chart. And that if you watch the weekly video, things are turning more negative there. In fact, we're even having some oversold conditions that way. But then there's other charts that we look at where things are still holding up for right now. Chicago Fed President Goolsby, who is a voter, came out and there were the latest person to come out and say, that the Fed has more to do to bring inflation back down to the target level, which now is continuing to be at about the 2% level. And so now we've heard a lot of these members of the FOMC come out and make statements that are pretty hawkish towards the market. And then that was on the heels of Jerome Powell's press conference last week, even though the Fed didn't raise interest rates. On a short-term basis, we still have a list here, but it is getting a bit shorter. We have the Stoke RSI, the Williams Percent R, the CCI 14 and 20, the Stochastics, the Standard Deviations chart, and the RSI based on nine periods. So we're still looking rather oversold, at least in the short term. And we just have the PMO studies, just one of the three charts that we look at that are still extreme negative in the intermediate term. We're still dealing with this scenario that what's giving the Fed the... I guess, impetus or catalyst to say that maybe we're not done raising interest rates is that we have this stronger than expected economy based on the economic reports that are coming out. We already know that they're going with this idea that they're going to have to keep rates higher for longer. 
but it's that raising interest rates and the employment situation is still continuing to be quite strong and that's justifying the fed's actions and we're also keeping an eye on the weaker economy in china and then oil has also been producing some inflationary concerns this is a scenario that i've been watching for a few days now and i was kind of hesitant to bring this up in the video but it's something we could still watch for, even if it doesn't play out just like this. It's, it's just to see what could be coming together. And I'll talk about this as I go through the charts. That longer term trend line, if you've been watching the videos for any length of time, going from the October 2022 low to the March 2023 low, we're not too far away from that. And if we continue to decline, get down to that level, that might also be in uh, what combed okay it should be combined all right this didn't come up in spell check but we're gonna get a lot of our intermediate term signals that could be giving us extreme negative readings all at the same time we could see a convergence of price action and indicators and that may end up producing some kind of a bounce out of that i'm not saying that's how it's going to play out we're just kind of seeing all of that come together when we look at all of our different charts. And then we're also at the end of September coming out of this week seasonal time. And so maybe with all of those combining or combed, as I said here, that we might see some kind of a bounce from there. Not, you know, just, just something to watch to see if it plays out that way. The dollar was up and interest rates were up, and these are producing headwinds for stocks, but it didn't seem to matter as much on Monday. We have the 30 to the five year, which has gone back to being normal now, but we've seen this before. That's why I have it in blue and it's still on the list. It's popped up to being more regular only to go back down and be inverted, but all of the other yield curves are still inverted. Sentiment continues to be negative. With the update, we ticked up to 38 where we had been at 36. And our trend is still negative. The ADI, ADX is getting stronger because it's above its moving average, but it's still below 20. I've changed our bias over to mixed. Even though we had an update, it wasn't a real convincing update. And I'm still keeping our momentum at negative. The economic reports that came out, we didn't have any in Monday's session. There'll be others that are coming out. We're continuing to climb with the 10-year yield. We're at 4.54%. We're above that 4.02% that is putting some pressure on stocks. This is biting into earnings for companies. And here's the intraday chart. We did gap lower and it looked like, okay, here we go. We're just gonna continue on. But we ended up just pretty much bottoming out at S1. And then we chopped sideways. We were able to claw our way back above the unchanged level. We got a little bit above the daily pivot, but then spent the rest of the day underneath that. And then we saw a little bit of buying going into the close and we closed pretty much at the high for the session. Here's a look at the growth versus value where they did have a slight update. Neither one is really outperforming right now, but just the fact that they're both going up is kind of positive. Here's our intraday look at S&P growth versus value where it did end up going higher. It was a little bit higher in Friday's session. So that's something kind of positive. And the fact that it was up a little bit more in Monday's session could be that there is some smart money going in there and actually buying growth stocks on weakness. Here's the, the end of day chart showing how we bounced up when we look at S&P growth versus value. And we're keeping an eye on the VIX because historically over the last, well, since 1990, the blue line is the average that the VIX has a tendency to go up during this part of the year. And when this is going up, that means stocks are going down. Here's the VIX showing how we ticked down just a little bit with the line chart. And we spiked up initially with the VIX and then closed pretty much at the low because fear subsided as the day went on. And we're seeing a little bit of a tick up now in volatility. It's slightly above the moving averages. And folks are getting a little bit concerned about things. Here's the other fear gauge that sometimes I show all the time and sometimes I don't show it it continues to tick up as well. And the other fear gauge that we look at <clears throat> is also ticking up just slightly, showing that there's an increase in fear. Looking at the VIX <clears throat> to V, excuse me. <clears throat> Looking at the VIX to VIX ratio, this is continuing to turn back up, which is negative for stocks. 
Looking at the five period simple moving average of the equity put call ratio, it's continuing to go back up and we're getting close to that extreme reading again. That's also negative for right now. The equity put call ratio based on 253 periods, it's continuing to go up. That's also negative. The ulcer index is still going up above its moving average. And the advanced decline line, we were pretty much flat based on price and volume, but we're dropping below the moving average based on volume. The new highs, new lows. A lot of new lows were registered right after the open because we were down just a little bit. So internally, we're not seeing an awful lot of strength in the S&P right now. The five period and the 10 period continue to go lower. The advanced decline ratio, it ticked up just a little bit with the blue line and the red line, but we're still below zero. This continues to be negative. Accumulation distribution did turn up just slightly, but is still below a declining moving average. So this is still negative. The check in money flow is also continuing to be negative, even though it ticked up slightly. Looking at the NYSE cumulative advanced decline line, it ticked up a little bit, but we're still back down to a, a, this previous low now, wondering if we can get some support from that. And then our regular look at the NYSE advanced decline line continues to show that we're dropping below the trend line. Here's also another measure of the NYSE advanced decline line, also showing how we're dropping below the trend line. The ratio between risk on and risk off continues to fall, and this is turning more intermediate, and that's still negative. Here's a look at our trend where we are above the moving average with the ADX, but we're still below 20. The red line was flat. The green line continues to decline. But if you're more aggressive, you might already count this as a trend, or if you're more conservative, you want to see more confirmation, especially if we cross back above 20. Here's the short term, also getting closer to that 20 level, but also showing that a negative trend is developing. And then I extended this trend line out, and I have another chart near the end of the video where we're looking at this same trend line here. But this is what I'm talking about. Could we possibly come down to this point, maybe on an intraday basis, and this might produce an awful lot of buyers coming back into the market. Now, if we close down below that, that's going to turn things more negative. But if we do hold at this level, if we even come down to this point, and it might take a number of days for this to actually work out, we're seeing a pretty significant trend line here going from the October 2022 low to the March 2023 low. And you know that people are seeing this and they may decide to come back into the market. Not saying it's going to happen that way, just something to kind of think about ahead of time. And then on the bottom, we can see where volume is back to below average. We still have some short-term indicators that are extreme negative with the Stoke RSI, the Williams Percent R, the CCI 14, and the CCI 20. We're also down underneath the short-term rainbow, and the longer we stay down below this, the more these lines will roll over. The stochastics, we're turning back up, but still extreme in the short, short term. We're still we're turning up slightly in the intermediate short term, but still extreme negative where we're still negative with the long short term. And the reason I say that is I take the short term and then further subdivide it because stochastics can be pretty touchy. The force index is no longer extreme negative. It's still negative, but it bounced up a little bit off of the Keltner band. The go no go system is still registering a deep purple signal here. So that's negative. And the highest high, lowest low values, where we're starting to turn down a little bit now with the blue line, that's turning a little bit more negative. The midpoint is starting to roll over slightly. And the red line, even though we came back above that a little bit, this is still looking negative for right now. The TTM squeeze is continuing to be more negative and declining. The balance of power ticked up slightly, but is still below the midpoint. So that's negative. The bullish percent index did tick down just a little bit. It's dropping further below 50. So this is also negative. The McClellan oscillator, which had been extreme negative, ticked back up slightly. So it's no longer extreme, but it's still negative. And the summation index based on price and volume continue to decline. The NYSE summation index, which gives us a broader measure of things, we're declining based on price and volume. The Elder Impulse system for the S&P continues to be negative, even though with the slight update. The mass index, it's flattening out right now. We're still wondering if some kind of a signal had been generated with this indicator, but it's kind of confused as to telling us what it thinks is happening. The PMO continues to decline, and we're also declining based on price and volume. 
we look at our PMO study, we're turning up slightly, but we're still extreme negative with the percent of PMOs that are rising. We're declining with the buy signals and declining with the PMOs that are above zero. The Swellen Trading Oscillator continues to decline based on price. It ticked up or flattened out a little bit based on volume. The NYSE bullish percent index is below 50 and declining. The NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index is also below 50 and declining. We're still below the Ichimoku cloud, so that support has not held, at least to this point. All of our oscillators continue to be headed lower, so that's negative. Looking at our moving averages, we're still under the 100-day moving average. If we come back up, will that provide some kind of overhead resistance? At the same time, you have to wonder, are we potentially going to come down to the 200-day moving average? Will we see that converge with that upper, upward sloping trend line? We're still in the third level, almost getting back into the second level with our negative standard deviations chart. The parabolic SAR is still negative. We're still below the rainbow with the intermediate term. And again, the longer we stay below this, the more these lines are likely to roll back over. The ease of movement is still below zero and declining. That's negative. The Arun indicator continues to decline, which is also negative. The RSI based on nine periods, it's turning back up slightly, but it's still extreme negative. We're turning up just a little bit with the RSI 14. Then we look at our short-term FIB levels where we were able to close back above this 100% retracement level. That's somewhat positive. And we're still above the 61.8% retracement level. That's showing that support, at least for right now, continues to hold. We're keeping an eye on the micro caps. They're getting close to that 100 level before. If we drop below that, that could be another negative aspect of the market, where earlier in the year we did set a 52-week low. We're wondering, are we going to find some support in here, or are we going to be able to bounce? But overall, the micro caps are still in a downtrend. Here's the longer-term trend study, where we go from the October 2022 low to the March 2023 low. And I drew these lines on here, so they may not be exact, but we're wondering, is there a chance that we could come down to this point and it could take just long enough for the 200-day moving average to catch up and then see some of our intermediate-term indicators turning more oversold, and then we see a convergence of those things happening at the same time. Just, just something to keep an eye on for right now. Then David uh, Keller from StockCharts.com he made a post over the weekend, and he says this is a confirmed head and shoulders top. I don't know. It depends on how you want to look at things. We have a shoulder over here on the left. We have the head at the top. And then this is some kind of a shoulder on the right. Um, and that's negative for the market, where we might see some kind of declines after that. If you look at patterns and things like that and use them as part of your decision process, you might think that this is an important chart. I tend to not use them very heavily. I do look at head and shoulders tops and bottoms because they're usually pretty blatant. But the pennant and the flag and all the other ones, the ascending triangles and all that stuff, I've seen them fail as much as I've seen them succeed. So, But again, we just want to be aware of this one. Where we look at our chart variations, the Heiken Ashi is still negative. The Kegi is still negative. The Renko is more negative, and the three-line break is also negative. The equal weight, it turned back up slightly, as did the S&P, but the equal weight index is underperforming. The Dow, this is kind of encouraging, too. We came down about to the 200-day moving average, and we're able to bounce up off of that. That could be positive. And the Diamonds, though, are still negative with the Elder Impulse system. The NASDAQ 100 still below this support level now. We're wondering, are we going to come back down and test this previous low? We haven't quite made it down to that level yet. Where the Qs have still remained at negative for the Elder Impulse system, we're also keeping an eye on this 61.8% retracement level for the NASDAQ 100. Haven't quite come down to that level yet. Or this previous low. Are we going to see some kind of a convergence in the next, well, near future, in a few days anyway? The NASDAQ also came down to its previous low, and so far you could make a case to say that this low is holding for right now, but we're still looking quite negative in the short term. We're also keeping an eye on the 50% retracement level. We were able to cross back above that. This level held before. Is it going to hold again? 
And then the FANG index continues to drop below its 50-day moving average, but longer term, it's still in an uptrend. The small caps still showing some weakness here, but they bounced up a little bit better in Monday's session. Didn't quite come down to this pivot level, but we're still below the 50 and 200-day moving averages. And the 50-day is now starting to roll back over, but we're still working off of a recent golden cross. This is where we could potentially be seeing another head and shoulders top, where here might be a shoulder, here's the head, here's the other shoulder, the left shoulder, but we're still looking negative. We're turning back up slightly with the RSI. We've really dropped below the 200-day moving average, and the MACD continues to decline. We've turned back to neutral for the small caps, though, with the update that they had. The mid caps are also still below their 200 day moving average, saw a bit of a bounce in Monday session, but got a lot of damage to repair. But we switched back to neutral for the elder impulse system for the mid caps. Looking at Dow theory, we were pretty much flat with the Dow. We turned back up slightly with the transports and we're still seeing a decline with the utilities, which could give some support to the S&P. I wanted to show the dollar chart because we've now gone into the 106 range. Back in 2022, when the dollar was seeing some real strength, that was quite often putting pressure under stocks. Here's this really spike up with the 10-year yield. We're, we're just gapping higher right now. So when we look at the price chart, we're declining with the RSI. We're well below the moving averages after giving a death cross. And the MACD is also continuing to go lower with this bond ETF based on price. And here's the 30 to the five year where we've just barely gone back to being positive, which means it's a more normal spread. Tom Bally, his research is still here, suggesting that September, based on what he's found, tends to be weak towards the latter part of September. And that's pretty much what we've been seeing to this point. So what's our outlook for Tuesday? We're still having some earnings reports that are being released. The UAW strike is still continuing. Apparently, the rider strike, they have some kind of a tentative deal. Not really big for the rider strike unless you're watching a movie or something like that. But the UAW strike could have some economic ramifications the longer it goes on. We're still wondering if there's going to be a government shutdown. There's some political posturing going on there. And then student loan repayments are supposed to start again at the beginning of October. That could put a drain on the economy. Our technicals are still negative, and we're still in the more conservative approach, saying that the trend is developing. If you're a little more aggressive, you think that the trend is already developed. We will get the FHFA housing price index on Tuesday, the S&P Shiller home price index, consumer confidence, and then new home sales will be coming out. And then keeping an eye on the different geopolitical events, just to see if any of this has an impact on the market. Here's the updated economic calendar for the week. We will get durable goods on Wednesday. We're going to get the third estimate for GDP on Thursday. Did I say Wednesday? Durable goods. And then Thursday, GDP. The big one is going to be Friday with the PCE prices. The Stock Traders Almanac statistics for September 26th. We are neutral to positive for the Dow and the NASDAQ, but we're neutral to negative with the S&P 500. We will be on the 17th trading day of the month, where sometimes we might see a little bit of a bounce in here. And then, according to Carson, we're pretty much flat to slightly a bounce on the 26th. And then here's a chart that I showed over the weekend, and I'm going to include this, at least for now, where the gold line here are pre-election years, where we might see some weakness, and that's this yellow area that we're going through right now, where we often see a... a rally going into the last part of the year. Now, other charts that we look at have this rally starting earlier. And then we're also looking at the NASDAQ during our pre-election year, where we're coming into the latter part of September. We're also seeing some weakness with the green line, the S&P, during a pre-election year. And we're only up 33 and a third percent of the time for the month of September. So our scenarios kind of have to lean towards the down one. We're still looking negative overall and that there's a trend developing there's not really a lot of justification right now to go with the up scenario we're still leaning a bit more towards the sideways trend because the adx for both the short and intermediate term are still below 20. so we still have our warning signs here we're uh, below those long-term trend signals and 
we're going to have a difficult time and it's going to take some real positive price action to be able to break back above those longer term trend lines. We're in a seasonal and historically weak time of the of the month and also in a weak month overall. The equity put call ratio is still going up. The 253 period equity put call ratio is also going up. The risk on posture is showing weakness. Our S&P 500 oscillators and NASDAQ 100 oscillator that we follow, those are all negative. The cumulative new highs and new lows for the NASDAQ are showing weakness. We're still above where we were at back in 2007 with the three-month yield. It hasn't topped out and started to roll over yet. The S&P is underperforming utilities, and the Staples S&P 500 ratio is advancing, which often puts pressure on the S&P. The Russell is still below its 200-day simple moving average, and we're wondering, has it formed some kind of a head and shoulders top? The parabolic SAR is negative, the vortex is negative, and we're dealing with earnings season. The positive sign, as I went over in the weekly video, the seasonality and setups are still in the background. The long-term daily special K, special K chart is positive. The weekly chart is negative. We're still above the downtrend channel upper line. The Russell, the small caps, and the mid caps are working off of recent golden crosses, but seeing some more shorter term weakness. Small and mid cap growth is still positive. The financial sector, even though it's been getting hammered too, it's still generated a recent golden cross. So our conclusion, we are negative in the short and intermediate term, but we're still keeping this idea open that a trend is developing and that trend would be negative. In the short term, we're still dealing with being oversold. And then in the intermediate term, we're also seeing some indicators of if we have kind of a significant down day, those indicators are going to start to become extreme negative, but we're still positive in the long term. Thank you. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you have a really good day and I will talk to you in the next video.